Hello everyone, on today's video we're going to be taking a look at a tool called Little Nav Map. Now this is a free application which is also portable, meaning you don't have to install anything if you want to try it. Uh, you can get it by going out to Google and basically typing in Little Nav Map. It's pretty straightforward, you're just going to download a little zip file which is going to give you this neat little program that gives you a lot of really, really, really awesome options in it, especially if you're doing any sort of navigation or anything along those lines. Now the reason I'm bringing this video up now is because a bunch of people have been requesting videos that involve more advanced navigational techniques. And I said, well, that sounds absolutely great. I'd love to do that. Unfortunately, a lot of the old school navigational techniques and the really, really meaty, nasty new ones require you to have paper and pencil and plotting charts. And unfortunately, it's a little difficult to do that on the computer. But this particular tool can actually do a lot of that work for you. So we're definitely going to take advantage of that today. So let's go ahead and get rocking. So the first things first, uh, whenever you're working with this tool, again, I'm just going to give you just a general overview here. I'm not here to blow you away or anything like that. You're going to want to make sure you get yourself some navigation data built into the program itself. If you see this little button up here, it says load a flight simulator scenery library into the nav, nav, nav database, it will give you the ability to select a navigator and press load. What this will do is grab all of the information out of that flight simulator and actually save it into here. As you can see, this is the last time that I've gone and updated it. So I'm actually going to bring it in and go ahead and load an all the new scenery that came out a little while ago. All right, uh, thanks to the magic of editing, you didn't have to sit through that for three and a half minutes. So now when I press the OK button, it has imported all of the data from Microsoft Flight Simulator directly into the simulator. Everything is here now, all the different airways, all the different airports, the navigational aids. If you can think of it, you can probably find it somewhere on this map today. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the absolute basics of using this program. Again, like I said, I don't want to get any uh, too, too carried away here, because if we do, then <laughs> we could be here for a very long time, and I could do a whole series of videos on this particular tool if you want to. Honestly, it's like the one thing that I use like the most for this process, and I usually use a bunch of different tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at the things we're going to need to do. Let's say we want to create a really simple flight plan. So let's say I want to go from uh, Hartford all the way down here to uh, Tweed, New Haven. Uh, not the world's most complicated or long. Uh, by the way, one thing you want to keep an eye out for is at the top of the screen, you have a couple different projection types. These projection types are going to be stupid important for us when we get into some of the more advanced navigational concepts. So uh, if I do say switch to a spherical projection, you're going to want to make sure that you try that. If I switch to a Mercator projection, obviously you're going to want to switch to that. Now you're probably saying here, uh, what's the difference? Well, um, this particular projection being Mercator puts everything on a cylinder. When you switch to a spherical projection, projection, it puts it on an actual circle, which is going to cause things like what your headings are going to be to shift significantly. And over time, you'll see exactly what I mean. I'm not saying there's one that's better than the other. All I'm saying is just be aware that you're going to be using both sets of these. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and create, like I said, a stupid quick flight plan. Easiest way to do this is you simply find where you want to start. You right click on it. You can do set uh, as the departure. And then you simply right click on your destination and go ahead and set this as my destination. So that is the world's simplest flight plan. And so you can see this would be for a VFR flight. We can now come over here. We can dial in uh, what altitude we're going to be cruising at. Let's say 3,500 feet. Actually, we're heading to the west, so we're going to be 4,500 feet. And it will automatically calculate things like top of climb and top of descent. Now, you're probably sitting there going, hey, I just downloaded this. I'm trying this out. It seems to be working, but my top of climb and top of descent have not generated. What's the deal? Well, this program allows you to dial in performance of a specific aircraft. Now, the way this step works is uh, we're going to take a look at this in a separate video because that's going to be something that's going to be really, really important. Is basically what you do is you come in here, dial in the known performance of a given aircraft, and then it will actually dynamically calculate things like when you need to climb, descend, everything along those lines. But again, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible for today. So we have ourselves our handy dandy VFR flight plan. Again, point A, point B, nothing too crazy. Now, if you take a look here, let me go ahead and expand this so you can see it. You'll see that each one of my little waypoints here has a set of different information on it. It has a course. It is a true course, which is going to be very important to us later on. It has our distance, which in this case is 30 nautical miles. Not too bad. It has how long it expects us to take. Again, this is based on the dialed in performance here. It tells us roughly how much fuel we use. A lot of people were asking about fuel planning. Again, this can do it all dynamically. And in the next video, we'll show you how to actually do those calculations so that you can get your stuff that you need to do. You've got your remarks, everything else is rocking and ready to go. Now, one thing I want to do, though, is I want to experiment with my flight plan a little bit. Now, normally when we do a flight plan, uh, we want to go ahead, if we're doing VFR, add in waypoints every so many miles. So one of the tricks that we're going to use, and again, this is going to come up as we get a little bit deeper into this tool, is we can actually add something called a range ring. And what a range ring is is simply a little ring on the map that lets you know how far apart everything is. So if I were to right-click, for example, on Hartford, you'll notice that if I scroll my mouse down, there's a thing that says add range ring. If I click on that, it's going to give me some preset range rings, which allow me to go ahead and 
estimate distances very accurately. Now, the problem with this range ring, and again, this is going to be tremendously important for us when we start doing triangulation later on, is that it's not really designed well. You know, it's got these really, really wide arcs that don't really do much for me. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because it doesn't do much for me. So we need to edit that. So to edit that, I can go up to my settings page up at the tippy top, and then there's actually an option where you can change your range ring radii. So I can go ahead and say, uh, let me have a 10. Whoop. We'll do a 10, we'll do a 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, if I press OK and go ahead and add that range ring in here like this, you'll notice that I have nice even intervals that burn your eyes all just a little tiny bit. But the reason I did this is because when I want to pick out positions on a map, I usually like to do it by measuring how far apart each one of those two points are. So in this case, I've got myself my Hartford Brainerd. My first waypoint would have to be somewhere along here. Now, and without actually being able to see too much of what's going on here, I notice there's a very large interchange right here on the right. And I also notice that you have Meriden and Markham Airport, which is located right over here on the right as well. We also have, looking over at Robertson Field, but the thing I'd probably go with is Middletown because it is a very, very distinctive bridge going through it. You literally cannot miss it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here on the map, right-click, and there's a thing that says Add Position to Flight Plan. Now, when I do that, it's going to go ahead and mark this little position right here. So now if I come in here, you actually have the ability to go ahead and, you know, center on that. You can also copy the coordinates under a clipboard if you're trying to pass it somewhere else or anything along those lines. The other really thing that's nice is you can come down here where it says Edit, and you can go ahead and give this a name. Uh, look for middle. Uh, we'll call this a uh, Middletown Bridge. And we'll say, look on your right for the bridge. So now we have our waypoint and we know exactly where it is. So now I can go down to my next range wing. And again, every 10 miles is what they recommend. Uh, it looks like we have North Haven right here on the right. We also have a distinctive mountain as well as uh, two little reservoirs down here. I don't, oh, Goofy of Vineyards. I actually know exactly where that is. Uh, we have Wallingford over here on the left, which is going to be kind of difficult to see. If I go out a little bit, obviously we have North Haven, which is very distinctive. Uh, we have Meriden, which is a little bit closer to us. But I'm um, just taking a look along here where my next waypoint is probably going to be. I'm actually going to put it a little tiny bit short, and I'll go ahead and put it right here. And I'll go ahead and add myself another point. Again, this is just... Keep it nice and simple. Again, I'm not doing anything too, too crazy here. Right click, I'm gonna edit this position. Uh, we're gonna call it a res, I can never spell the word reservoir. Reservoir, right, no, it's a reservoir, not reservoir. Look on at left wing for res. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. So now I know my next waypoint is gonna be looking for that reservoir. Our final waypoint is gonna be, of course, our destination, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, the reason this is so convenient for us is now if I go over here and actually take a look at my flight plan, it's actually broken my flight plan into smaller chunks. So you can see here that the estimated wind, again, if you wanna get wind, you can go up to weather and you can actually select where you want the wind. You, know, you can set it to be a manual wind if you choose to do so. You can set it to be an automatic wind. There's a lot of different modes that you can use for this particular purpose. Again, I'll use the wind from actually in the real world. You can get it out of the flight simulator if you need to. Let me shut that off. And you can see that it breaks everything down for us quite nicely. Again, this is if we're doing a basic VFR flight plan. It gives us our course, which is very helpful. This is where we're going to be pointing the airplane. It gives us our true course, which is going to be stupid useful for us later on. And of course, it gives us things like our distances, our time remaining. It gives us our fuel calculations. So like, you know, if I went up here and said recent performance, I would search this to Cessna 172 and let it process. You can see it automatically, dynamically updated everything for me. So I can see exactly how much fuel I expect to have remaining. It tells me exactly how many pounds. It tells me all my little remarks. You know what the greatest thing in the world is, though? You can come up here and you can print this flight plan and actually stick it on here with all your individual pieces on a nice little sheet of paper, which you can slap onto your kneeboard so you're ready to rock. Again, I can't believe this is a free tool. You know, we, we, I was never so spoiled in the real world to have stuff like this. So that's it for a VFR plan. Again, that's super simple. If we wanted to export it over to Flight Simulator, all we have to do is take our mouse to the top of the screen, click on Export Flight Plan, and all we have to do is give it a name, press Save, and just like that, it's been saved into the Flight Simulator and each one of our waypoints has been saved into the flight simulator, meaning in flight simulator, we can actually pick where we want our waypoints to go. And you can see how wonderfully useful that is as a tool for VFR flight planning. So let's go ahead and start over. I know you're sitting there going, wait, but you did all that work. It's like, yeah, don't worry about it. So now we're going to do an IFR flight plan. So we'll make it a little bit different. Let's say we're going from uh, Francis Green here. We're going into, uh, let's say, Newark. So I'm going to go ahead and make this my departure. I'm going to come all the way down to uh, Newark, New Jersey, which is a very, 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 very busy airport. Come down here and say this is my destination. But I want to go ahead and make this an IFR flight. So the way I do this is actually pretty straightforward. If you take your mouse to the top of the screen, there's this thing that says create a flight plan between departure and destination. If I click that, it's going to pop this little box up that'll let me go ahead and dial in some details. 
Now, the first thing is you want to guess your uh, cruise altitude. Um, let's see what is our total distance here. Uh, da, 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 just taking a look at uh, 138. Okay, so that's going to be 10%. That's going to be about 14,000 feet, if I had to guess. We're traveling even distances naturally. Press the adjust button. Oh, this is, oh, my bad. My bad. This is supposed to be an IFR flight. Much better. Adjust. So it estimates 6,000 feet. The reason it estimates 6,000 feet is on account of the fact that this particular aircraft is assumed to be, you know, a little Cessna. Let me go grab a Boeing 747 here. Ooh, I've got it an alternate error. Easy to fix. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. Zero pounds per hour. I can definitely see what my issue is there. 22770. Press OK. Uh, my alternate speed is wrong, but that's OK. All right, go to my flight plan. You can see that it's pre-calculated everything for me. Let's go back to the little option here. Now you can select what airways you want to use. We can adjust our cruise altitude. Let's say, like I said, 14,000 feet. You can even select if it prefers airways or direct travel. This is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to press the calculate button. It's going to sit there and think and whoosh. Look at this perfectly planned IFR flight plan between these two destinations. Now, this is what gets this program so incredibly cool. And again, I just want you to be familiar with this before we start using it for mean things. Is the fact I can now come up here to Francis Green, right click and actually have it show different types of procedures from it, which I think is absolutely amazing. You know, again, I've already added this as a particular plane here. But what I could do is I could come up here to procedures, go to airports if I type in KPVD. KPVD. Oh, got to get rid of Amendola. Obviously, it's in the middle of Italy. It's not, not going to do us very much good here. Uh, let's say K, oh, KPVD. There we go. Now I can just uh, double click that real quickly. And of course, you can show all your approaches and information on it. Like if I did show information, it's going to go call up a little bit of data, which is going to show me everything I need to know down here on the right hand side, which again is already absolutely wonderful. So, you know, I come here, I select my airport, and I can go ahead and set some stuff up for this as well. Yeah, so the trick here is all I have to do is come to my airport, double click on it, and it's going to bring up all of my procedures over here on the right. Now, what's so great here is I've got all my stars and all my SIDs. Now, over here at Francis Green, we don't have any SIDs listed, so I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. I know DPs. But if we did, we could actually dial in a dynamic DP. So let's go ahead and focus ourselves all the way down to Newark here. If I went over to Newark, I could double click on it. And now you can pick all of your different stars and SIDs as well. Now, watch this. If I hold my mouse and click on one of these, it'll actually show you in blue blue on the map, the shape of the star. This is the most wonderful thing I've ever seen ever when it comes to predicting where we need to go with our aircraft. Taking a look at this real quickly, I realized pretty much instantaneously that none of these stars is going to serve us any good here because we're going to be coming out of the easterly direction. So unfortunately, I'm not going to use them. But when it comes to approaches, you can also preview each one of the approaches dynamically, including all the things like altitudes as well. So I'm seeing the RNAV and everything like this. Of course, our wind today, it shows us that the wind is coming out of this direction. You can see this is again predicted wind here. It's coming basically straight out of the west. Unfortunately, that gives us runway 29er. Uh, so let's see what we have for runway 29er. We have uh, RNAV 29. That's not too, too bad. Oh, it's 22, my bad. Uh, there we go. RNAV X, RNAV Y. Oh, I'm going to do this one right here. And look at that gorgeous, gorgeous plan that comes out of Teterboro. We could take one that comes out of the south. We could even take this one out of uh, basically that area. I'm just going to right click it and I'm going to boop, stick it right into the flight plan. Look at that. Now we have a completed IFR flight plan ready to go. All we have to do now is go up to file, click on the export to flight simulator, and boop, off it goes into flight simulator. And now we can fly this entire flight with all that, what did that take, five minutes or so to go ahead and program all these things? So you can see just how incredibly useful this tool is. When we start doing more advanced things, what we're going to start doing is actually coming over to our different pieces. And we can do things like adding uh, range rings for um, different navigational aids. Like in this case, this little ring here shows you the maximum range of that navigational aid. So you can already see where that's going to be important. We can also do really, really crazy things where we can go ahead and draw lines on the chart, which gives us the ability to go ahead and predict positions, which is going to be tremendously important for us once we start getting into the more advanced concepts. All right, hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, showing this tool. By the way, if the screen gets a little too crowded, you have all these options up here to go ahead and shut things off that you don't need. Again, you can make it so you only see your primary airport or anything like that. And of course, if you shut your uh, waypoints off, it gets to be a lot cleaner. There's also a thing up at the top that lets you do things like switch to terrain mode, which I really, really like. You can also switch to, you know, cardo mode. And you can even, if you really want to get normal, you can switch to plane mode, which is uh, super awesome because it keeps everything very, very simple for you. All right, hopefully this is helpful as far as uh, giving you kind of a little nudge. Uh, next video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can actually load the performance of an aircraft into this program. Uh, following that, we'll take a look at some of the fundamentals of what I like to call intermediate navigation. Uh, that's going to be a navigational techniques using you know very, very accurate timing, calculating wind when you don't have a GPS, and everything along those lines. Enjoy.